My name is Ólafur Jónasson. I'm going to tell my poster is NOAA First Morris SST Reanalysis or Morris Run 1 from Terra and Aqua. I'll start with some background. <clears throat> so NOAA produces SST from LEO, as low as orbit sensors such as VIRS, Morris, ABTR, and uh, GAC and FRAC, and geostationary sensors such as API and AHI. And we use, for that, we use the Advanced Clear Sky Process for Ocean or AXPO Enterprise System. And <clears throat> as for the current NOAA ST use priority, so they've been interested in full mission SST records consistent across individual sensors and missions. So that uh, includes reprocessing the high resolution one kilometer LEO sensors, so VIR and ABHR and MORIS from 2009, and aggregate this data from multiple LEO sensors into a gridded super collated or L3S LEO product. Mm -hmm. And you said also, also been interested in to reprocess the four kilometer Avis or GAC records from 1981 and include that also in L3S LEO. So, in response to the user's need, we have performed several full mission LEO analysis for the analysis of RAMS performed with AXPO version 2.80. So, we reprocessed the math of first generation records, so it's math, math of A, B, and C. And we reprocessed the JPS views in a, in a satellite or sensor, so that's NPP and NOAA 20, and we recently added NOAA 21. And we also <clears throat> reprocessed the uh, AVSR GAC records, which on various uh, NOAA satellites from 1981 to present. So the MATOP and JPS SSDs are aggregated into two 0.02 degree gridded supercolated L3S LEO products, so as AM and PM. So each product is uh, rep <clears throat> products are reported daily, so it's day and night, and the resolve the diamond cycle at four local times, so it's 1.30 and, uh, and 9.30 AM PM. And users also requested to aggregate these phase four, four uh, AM PM day and night files into one daily file. It's called L3S LEO daily. So <clears throat> another user's request was to include Modis SST in the Axe World as Leo. So we've, what we did was we, we downloaded the full mission NASA Terra and Aqua Modis records uh, from PORAC and processed in SQUAM to evaluate the feasibility of blending with Axe for Weirs and Fracasties, but found uh, in, in practical to measure product differences from, in, uh, from the NASA product to our own Axe products. So for this reason, we performed a full mission uh, in this year, we performed a full mission reanalysis for Terra and Aqua, and then we reprocessed the Axe version 2.80. And work is currently going to underway to incorporate this into L3S LEO record. So we'll note that Aqua flies in the same afternoon orbit uh, as the JPS SLS, while the Terra flies in a mid-morning orbit at 10.30, which is about one hour later than the matchups. And here you can see like an example, uh, imagery from, uh, this is uh, Aqua Morris from Chesapeake Bay. So this is the full sky imagery from Aqua Morris. And this is the, uh, the gray overlay is the cloud mask. And we also have, uh, as we, in all of our other 2.80 products, we have now thermal fronts included in the files. So it's a binary indicator and the strength of the fronts. So during the Morris run one, we found, we encountered a few uh, challenges and we had to perform some mitigation. So special efforts were taken to address the thermal emissive bands, so TB, calibration analysis. So the brightness temperatures in all SC bands had been stabilized. So we did this via analysis of observed minus modeled uh, BTs before feeding them back into AXPO. <clears throat> so we encountered three types of calibration anomalies during our production of Modis and one and so one of them was when uh, the uh, black body temperature on Modis Terra was changed in 2020. So this, so this uh, plot here shows the like a daily mean bias with respect to CMC level four font in SST. So around this time period. So this is red is AXPO SST without mitigation. Blue is without mitigation. And uh, the green is the NASA SST. So you can see on this date here, so that's uh, April uh, 25 is the end. So these two, two dust lines denote the beginning and the end of the chains. So you can see another a jump in the SST. So this is because of, and if, on the right side, you can see the same uh, plot uh, time series for the channel 20 uh, observed minus modeled uh, brightness temperature. So we can see a discontinuity in this uh, band, which caused the discontinuing SST. And it's been mitigated in our SST product or modest round one product. So a second uh, artifact that we noticed uh, was that, so uh, about once, uh, four times a year or quarterly, there uh, is like, uh, there's a performance what is called a warm-up cool-down exercise on Moody's. So that's when the black body is warmed up and cooled down. And we found that during each of these minor exercises, we saw a spike in nighttime SST. So these, uh, this time series shows uh, 2019 or every single day of this year. And the dust lines uh, uh, denote the Days with day and uh, with a warm up cool down exercise, and you see every time there's a spike. So, blue is the 
Axpo with no mitigation, uh, red is the Axpo with mitigation, and uh, green is the NASA SSD product. So you can see that with the mitigation, there is no uh, there, there are no spikes left. However, they are still left in the NASA SSD product. So a third uh, kind of uh, calibration anomaly that we saw, we saw and noticed that drift in the in the thermal emission bands of both Terra and Aqua. So this kind of plot here shows the monthly mean bias versus uh, I guess in situ SSD for both uh, Axpo, uh, Morris, uh, Terra, and Aqua. So Aqua in purple, Terra in blue here. So you see in the first 10 years like, that Aqua kind of drifted downwards a little bit by about 500 per Kelvin and like and uh, the and Terra did the opposite. So it was initially stable in the first 10 years and then drifted upwards. So the left here shows with no and how it looks like with no mitigation. So we have detrended the BTs by comparison to radiative transfer of the BTs. And you can see here like the two corresponding curves with mitigation, and now they are flat with respect to in situ. Uh, and the here are the, you know, the green and the red show the corresponding Terra and Aqua NASA products. So they don't have this, uh, there's no detrending in their products. So you can see that Aqua is fairly stable, but Terra has been, has been drifting by quite a bit, or about 15 uh, hundredths of a Kelvin over the mission. So this uh, next section deals with the global validation of Modis RAN 1, I guess, in C2 SST. So, this table here summarizes the Axpo Modis RAN 1 validation statistics against IQAM, drifters, and tropical moorings, or DTMs. We also saw similar NP No 20 Vs and NASA Modis uh, version R2019 statistics also shown in this table. So we can see that the Axpo Modis SD and the standard deviation in RSDs are consistent with Axpo and Vs and NASA and Modis. But if you look at the, for example, the standard deviation here for the here to the Axpo Terra and Aqua, they are slightly higher than four years, which are the two here, so about hundreds or two hundred Kelvin for nighttime. And for daytime, you can see it's about uh, 42 here versus 38 for four years. So it's, it's slightly degraded performance <clears throat> compared with years, which is expected because on years we have an additional channel available. So that's the 8.6 micron channel row and 14 on more, on, on years. So this channel is present on MODIS, but it's not you know, good enough or usable for SST. And so that's what we attribute the better performance of years to. And there's also the better VIR spatial resolution, which makes the cloud mask or a clear sky mask a bit more uh, effective. So we see that the uh, and, uh, Expo, uh, well, this, this statistics are slight are superior to the NASA MODIS product. So if you look at the standard deviation here, so that's, for example, here 33, so it's 40 for the NASA Terra. And during daytime, it's 42, 0.42 versus 0.50 for NASA Terra. And so these uh, statistics are all shown also here in a, for like the mean, and, and, and it's also like shown the mean for with in a single sensor error statistics, or SCS bias applied. So SD with and without SCS, RSD with and without SCS. And we can see if you also compare the JPI, uh, the NASA and the AXPO uh, statistics with SCS bias applied, so there's a bigger gap. So there's in a, the, in a different deviation, there's no to be lower for AXPO products. In all cases, you can see, for example, here 33 versus 29, 42 versus 33. So it's quite a bit lower for AXPO products with SCS, but for the, for the NASA products, it stays about the same. So the gap between the NASA and the J and the Axpo products is wider when you apply SCS bias correction. So as for ongoing work, so we plan to include more SRAN one SST into the Axpo high resolution L3 S Leo. So Aqua will be included. Aqua will be included in L3 S Leo PM along with uh, we're also adding NOAA twenty one which SST. So the new Axpo version two, and uh, so this is uh, the version two point eighty one. LTS Leo, and this will be released superseding the current version 2.80, which includes MVP and all 20 years. So including Terra and LTS Leo AM was considered, but not implemented to do significant, significantly different overpass time. So it's 9.30 for Meta versus 10.30 for uh, Terra. However, uh, however, both Terra, Aqua and Terra, as, as, as well as no 21 versus will be included in the daily product or LTS Leo daily version 2.81. And then also finally, uh, archival of the Moise Ran one L2P, L3, and L3C data will be discussed with a product. So it's currently available on CoastWatch in L3C formats. Uh, so thank you. That's it. Thanks for listening.